Marcus, welcome to the shot. You must be really happy to have signed on finally. Yeah, yeah delighted. It's obviously a great club, ex-football league club. And as um, soon as the offer come in, obviously it was sort of a no-brainer to come here. Um, it's a long way to come from where I'm from, but I'm more than happy to, to be here and can't wait for the season to start. Now, obviously, sometimes with a goalkeeper, it seems that some people just think you just keep the ball out of the net. But this day and age, you have to be a bit more capable with your feet. So how would you describe your game? Uh, main thing, keep it out of the net. <laughs> uh, come for crosses and help the back line out. But I like to think I'm good with my feet and I can play out. Used to used to play outfield, so I like to think I'm good with both feet. And main things, being brave on the ball. It's not just about being brave, putting your head where people that put the feet and stuff like that it's about being brave on the ball and stuff like that and uh, doing what I can to help the team get three points. Now you're gonna to have to go in a bit more detail about playing outfield there what, what kind of age did you decide you were a goalkeeper or, or were put in goal? 14. 14 so, so quite late. So this is my tenth year, ninth year in goal um, I had a few trials at uh, football clubs but didn't get in um, then my stepdad said should go in goal because I'm always chucking myself about yeah. in the park or with my mates or whatever and then tried it and then within about six months I got a trial at Sheffield United and uh, signed and six months after that got signed a scholarship so and then obviously you were representing England not long yeah. after so quite yeah. a rise really wasn't yeah. it I think about 18 months from when I started playing in goal to when I got called my first call up for England um, so yeah, that sort of period was pretty crazy for me from playing Sunday League to then England yeah. in that short space of time. How was those England camps? I mean, you must have been around some insanely talented players. Yeah, uh, Mikhail Saka, um, is a Mason Greenwood, obviously, um, uh, Jimmy Garner, Anthony Gordon, Curtis Jones. Uh, they were just to name like a few of them yeah, who've yeah. obviously gone on to have brilliant careers. Um, but I think when I first went, it was a bit of an eye opener because I'd, I'd trained with Sheffield United, and there's some players in there that have really good careers already in the football league and national league. But when I first went there, the tempo and the the skill that they all had, you could tell they were going to play in the Premier League. And in terms of your kind of football upbringing at Sheffield United, obviously it's a very very great club, like yeah. really great standard of football there. Was was that something that's helped you in, in your development? Yeah, definitely. I think they were sort of my heroes growing up because I'm a Sheffield United fan. So to train with them week in, week out was yeah. like a, a dream. And then when I played my first senior game, even though it was a friendly, it was sort of everything I'd, I'd dreamed of as a kid. Um, but sort of seeing the standards they set week in, week out, even just on a, an hour's training, it's just nothing like I'd experienced before and I think it's really helped me in you know, what, where I've got to at the minute. And then something else that would have helped you obviously is playing men's football. You had a, a various, well quite a lot of loan spells didn't you and, and yeah. getting your getting your experience in this league and the league below. So, so yeah. was that kind of a good introduction into the men's game? Yeah, I think since I was a second year scholar that's when I first got my first game in men's football at Gainsborough and then when I was 17 went to Geisley and then sort of every Every year of my contract at Sheffield United, I'd, I'd gone on loan. So I think it's about seven or eight loans, uh, I think I had. Um, and then I decided that I needed to sort of progress my career in a, in a permanent move at Wilston and uh, happy that I was able to perform well and um, hopefully I can keep rising up. It was quite a breakthrough season for you last year, wasn't it? As you say, you know, Whole, I know you joined a bit later on, but basically a whole season with, yeah. as, as number one for them. And, and although they didn't have maybe the best fortunes in where they were in the league table, you, you still managed to impress. So it, it, how, talk us through last season. Yeah, so I, it was um, quite a weird one. Like, it's like moving down to London so far away from home. Yeah. I didn't imagine I'd be playing for Wilston, but it was, it was a great season, really enjoyed it. And I think the... The fact that we were part time and managing to beat teams like Oldham, who used to be in the Premier League, stuff like that was pretty crazy. And, and yeah, they had a really good following of fans. And uh, for me, it was I'd done Conference North and I'd done yeah, I'd done well there. I'd had success there. Then two loans I had in the National League um, didn't do as well as I wanted to. And then last season proved that I 
that I could do it. And then before that, when I when I had loan deals in League Two, I didn't manage to break through into a number one spot. So last season was really important for me to get my career back on track and, and just kick on. And well, you must be excited to do that with us soon. I yeah. mean, it's just under a month now. First of July is when we go back to pre-season, so yeah. you must be really excited to get to meet the rest of the lads and and get cracking. Yeah, can't wait. I think it's most I've looked forward to the start of the season for a long time. New club, new surroundings, new fans, everything. Coaching staff, players. I met a few of the players already, and they seem real nice. So can't can't wait for first of July when I'm when I'm here.